we celebrate today the baptism of our Lord. The word baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, meaning dip, sink, or immerse. I ilunod siya. And this is what happened to Jesus in the river Jordan. He was baptized by John the Baptist. He was immersed into the waters. And then we were told by St. Luke that while he was praying, the heaven was opened. And then the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. My favor rests in you. It was a very personal address to Jesus by the Father. In other Gospels, in other accounts, it did not say, you are my beloved son, but this is my beloved son. But here in the Gospel of Luke, it was so personal. You are my beloved son. My favor rests in you. The Father owns Jesus. You are my beloved son. I love you. You are mine. My favor, my grace, my love, my mercy rest on you. The Father articulated His love. The Father is so expressive of His affection and demonstrative of His love. And I think this is what we miss many times. We do not usually express our love for one another. Couples, husbands and wives, do you still say, I love you? Even if you advance in years in your marital commitment. That after, even after so many disagreements and quarrelings, at the end of the day, before going to sleep, you can still embrace your husband, your wife, and say, I still love you. To the parents, can you still say, I love you? When your children fail, Can you still assure them that the love will always be there even if they fail your expectations? The Father of Jesus claims Him, owns Him, 
And Jesus needed it so badly because his baptism is the beginning, the launching, and the inauguration of his public ministry. A very demanding ministry which at times will lead him to many confrontations and rejections that will culminate on the cross. And on the cross, he will really need this assurance that he is loved. That even on the cross, he will still continue to feel this assurance. Father, why did you abandon me? At the height of his suffering, he did not turn to other gods like Israel. At the height of his suffering, he was still seeking the assurance of that love that he heard during his baptism. Even in the darkness of his crisis, he will still seek that kind of assurance from his father and not from other gods. Jesus is telling us what gives us strength, what is the, sor the source of our resiliency can only come from the assurance of the love of God. And this is the assurance that we all baptized are asked to share, to manifest, to show in words and in action. Many of us, many of our baptized brothers and sisters, or many of our brothers and sisters are still suffering because of the effect of the disaster. And they are our fellow brothers and sisters. By virtue of our baptism, they are our brothers and sisters because baptism makes us sons and daughters of the Father. We only have one Father. That is why in one of the parts of the Mass, we sing together, we pray together, we call God our Father. Not just my Father, but our Father. And if we call God our Father, we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And the difficulty and suffering of others should affect us because we are our brothers. We are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that is why last January 5, 6, and 7, 136 of us representing the Diocese of Tandag went to Dinagat province to help our brothers and sisters. Of the 136 of us, 45 were priests and deacons. Imagine 45 priests and deacons, 27 religious sisters, Eight seminarians in theology, 19 representatives from Adela Serati Memorial Medical Center, seven of them were doctors who volunteered to give medical services. And the rest were representatives from the youth. Doon nakita yung mga cook, mga carpenters, 
and laborers to carry the goods. And you know, we were in that one big boat. And while we were approaching the port of Dinangat, I could see the parish priest waiting for us. I was the first person who stepped out from the boat to meet him and to embrace him that we are here. And I could feel how happy and grateful he was. He was crying. I was embracing him so tightly. He was my former student. I was telling him, we are here, 136 of us. We brought some goods. And then we heard that not all the goods that we brought with the wing vans and the, 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 the other vehicles, they were not allowed to, to be transported in that barge because of the many vehicles that were already lined up. And some of us were frustrated. We are already here. What can we do? The goods have not arrived. The medical supplies was in the other wing van. But it was good that there was one wing van that was able to cross the island. And we call our group Duyuk Ambit. Duyuk. Be one. Be in solidarity. Ambit. Share. Because the first act of helping others is to put ourselves to the very experience that they are experiencing to share their pains and what happened during that day was an invitation for us to share in the very experience of the hopelessness of people we thought that Duyuk Ambit is something very active. We have to do something. But at times in the very experience of frustration, the goods did not arrive. It was an experience of helplessness. And that is the kind of experience that people experience in the province, in the island. They want to do something, but they felt so paralyzed. They were so powerless. You see, at church, all the roofings were gone. You see houses without roofs. Trees bow down to the ground. You see devastation all around the island, all throughout the province. But in that one Jim Nation. The community was gathered and the neighboring communities were also there together with the whole delegation from the Diocese of Tandag. And you see doctors very busy attending to the patients. Sisters, priests, seminarians, and lay 
doing psychosocial intervention, psychosocial support to the children, to the youth, to the parents. You see people all around, happy, laughing, some were crying, up, relating their own stories of fear during the typhoon. And then some of them shared in this basketball court we held so many activities so many tournaments but never in our history as a community that we were gathered this way with the kind of joy that we experience a joy that we have never experienced before as a community And they said, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for the care and the love that you have shared to us. After that long day, I asked some priests and sisters, to come with me to visit to other parishes nga dili na namo maabot tungod sa limitasyon sa panahon because i wanted to see the other priests there were six priests assigned in that province so we went straight to the farthest parish to loreto that was 80 kilometers away. After a long day, we still traveled for another 80 kilometers, another 80 kilometers back to Kagjanao. But when we reached there, the Paris priest was so happy at the sight of a bishop, a priest, priest, and religions. He was so thankful that despite the distance, we were still able to find time, stretch ourselves to meet him. My other interest is to see also the vastness of the devastation of the whole province. When I saw the devastation, I felt my heart was stretched. Suffering stretches our hearts. But it is the only heart enlargement that does not threaten life. It is a heart enlargement that prolongs life and makes sacrifices meaningful because it is done to express and manifest the love of God, the love of Jesus to humanity. Those who were left in the convent thought that we will never have the exit, the exit conference to process our experience that night after dinner because they thought, ah, si Bishop, pag uli to, flat tire na, and then we can enjoy, we can drink, we can socialize. But lo and behold, the bishop came back so refreshed, so energized because of my wonderful experiences with the other priests. And the conference continued until 10 in the evening. 
It was a long day. Many inconveniences, a scarcity of water. Some of us slept on the tent, inside the tent, on the floor. Definitely we lack sleep. Inconveniences in using the CR. But I just thank the Lord. I did not feel tired. And maybe because we were so happy with what we have done. When we are so happy, we do not easily get tired because there is no energy leak. We become more whole. We become stronger when we do something for others. And we thank you for all the donations that you have given and we have brought to our brothers and sisters. We continue our intervention for their livelihood and their rebuilding of their houses. If you still have some resources to share, we continue to welcome them. And we continue to express our solidarity with our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. Because all of us are brothers and sisters because we only have one Father in heaven. May God continue to bless us and remind us that in our baptism, we only have one Father and we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And the joy and the sorrow of our brothers and sisters are also our joys and our sorrows. May God continue to bless us. Amen.